In this video, we're going to be talking about E3 game vouchers and more and why this all leads to Nintendo having new hardware coming out in 2024 because of the reasoning that Nintendo is not participating in E3. But we have a lot to go over, a lot of things to discuss. So you know what? Without further ado, let's jump right into it. <laughs> So IGN originally put out a report last night from their sources that Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo would not be participating in the Reed Pop led E3 this year. E3 is coming back with a physical event, and Reed Pop did put out there that they have a lot of interest from major companies. It's just not the three console manufacturers, which is unfortunate and does mean that we will likely not be attending the E3 event because the big draw for us and the big reason we would go is to create Nintendo content for you guys. And while there will be third-party companies there with games coming to Switch, heck, maybe Hogwarts Legacy is playable there, it just isn't worth it without Nintendo because Nintendo usually provided a majority of the demos. So without those demos to play, it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to attend E3 when we could just do coverage from home about those games and other things. When while you might not get those hands-on impressions, they're a bit less valuable when there's not hands-on impressions of like a new Mario game or something like that. So that sucks. Now, what's interesting about this report is that it's not a universal thing. Xbox, as an example, is still going to be having an event. They're still going to be doing a showcase. They're still going to be hosting demos like they do every single time. They're just not going to be brand associated with E3, but they still might let E3 attendees in to play demos. So pretty much it's exactly like what Microsoft has done this whole time. They're just not buying show floor space. That was probably something Reed Pop wanted them to do. Instead, they're going to host everything at the Microsoft Theater, which is literally right next door to the LA Convention Center. So I guess you could argue Xbox is still involved, but I think they just want to avoid the direct branding association for now. But whatever, Xbox is technically still there. Sony left in 2019, so Nintendo's really the big one that is a bit surprising to have them not participate. But we have additional details on why Nintendo in particular is not participating, because Microsoft is still doing stuff, but Nintendo isn't. And why? Well, this comes from Video Game Chronicle, who said, according to Video Game Chronicle's publishing sources with direct knowledge of Nintendo's plans, the company has decided to skip E3 2023, the event's first physical show in four years, because, and this is the key point, it feels it has fewer major releases than usual ready to show, which would justify significant event space. Think about that for a moment. Nintendo told Video Game Chronicle, their sources at Nintendo told them, hey, we're, you know why we're not at E3? We don't have a bunch of major games to show to justify spending the money to be there. Remember the old rumor? It's not even that old at this point. Remember when they said Tears of the Kingdom would be the last major selling game? That report, that rumor, that thing thrown out there that yeah, after Tears of the Kingdom, Nintendo has nothing major planned. This would seem to back that up. Yeah, Pikmin 4, you can call a major game if you want, but it's not a system seller, and they're not going to base an entire E3 around Pikmin 4. So while there probably is a Pokemon game this year and other, you know, GameCube ports and DLC, maybe it's going to end up being an extremely light year. And why would it be an extremely light year? Well, typically when Nintendo has these really, really light years this late in a generation, it means a new system is around the corner and... Nintendo might be banking games for that system. You want a new Mario game? Maybe we don't get a 2D one this year. Maybe we don't get a 3D Mario because they're saving it for the next system. Maybe they think any major game in the works after Tears of the Kingdom should be in the launch year of the new system. Because remember, 2017 was such a killer launch year that maybe Nintendo's takeaway from that was we need to value having a killer lineup at launch we're not going to do the PlayStation thing. We're not going to release major games all the way up to system launch and then not have anything in the first couple of years of the new platform. That is PlayStation strategy. No, we're going to slam it hard in year one of this new platform. And that'll end up coming out at some point next year. Remember, we also had the report from Nikkei about how they're negotiating manufacturing terms right now for that hardware, likely going to go in production in summer or second half of this year to release in 2024. So you put that into perspective and you go, everything is lining up that Nintendo is releasing new hardware in 2024 and them not participating in an E3, which is disappointing. Also with a lack of major games to justify 
Show floor space kind of says they might not even have a general direct. Doesn't mean they won't have a partner direct or a dedicated game direct, but probably won't have a general direct, which is also really sad for many of us. So that is what's happening there. Now, on the flip side, we have a positive story, at least for those of us that live in the United States, and that is that game vouchers are coming back. Nintendo did an oopsie, right? We've been talking about this upcoming direct and evidence supporting it. And this is clearly something that was going to be in that direct, at least in the North American version of the direct, because it because Nintendo accidentally posted a trailer to their YouTube channel and literally took it down within minutes. It, it, it was was not up for very long. It was clearly not meant to be live. Whoever uploaded it selected the wrong publication date. Game vouchers were probably going to be part of this direct. And for those that don't remember what game vouchers were, because we haven't had them or you weren't around, you didn't own a Switch when they were a thing. Back in 2019, Nintendo launched a game voucher program where you could pre buy a $99 game voucher digitally through the eShop, and then you could get two $60 Nintendo published games. So you would have basically knocked Nintendo published games under 50 bucks. So imagine you want to get Bayonetta you know, the upcoming Bayonetta Origins game, and you're interested in getting Tears of the Kingdom. Well, you could buy a $99 game voucher, and both of those games become $50, saving you 20 bucks. So it was a way to get you to buy more games, but then save money, and it made digital games cheaper, and this made a lot of logical sense. Why wouldn't you take advantage of this, especially if you're someone who already buys games digitally? So it made digital games $10 cheaper than physical, made a lot of sense. They only ran it for about six months in the United States back in 2019. From what I can tell, I think they're still running it in PAL regions and in Japan. They never canceled the program. Maybe it's not advertised as much, so you forgot about it, but they still have it in those regions. That's what I'm understanding, but we haven't had it here in North America since then. I don't know if that was a Doug Bowser decision or if that decision came from upper echelon of Nintendo because maybe people in the United States were the ones primarily taking advantage of it and they figured, hey, let's just send them back to spending 60 bucks on digital games. But it is cool to see this is coming back. This does come literally from the horse's mouth. Showed you a little bit of the trailer they published. Hopefully Nintendo doesn't ding our video for that. If they do, we'll have to republish this video and, and just get rid of that footage. But... Guys, I, look, this is really cool. I'm glad it's coming back. Of course, it's coming back at a time when maybe there isn't as many major upcoming games, so they're hoping they use these on older games. But hey, you know, Nintendo doesn't discount their games often, so I guess that's not a bad deal. And you know what's new, because like they're advertising Splatoon 3 and other games that didn't even exist during the voucher program. So take that for what you will. I'm really sad about the E3 stuff. This might be the end of E3. Maybe. Because if what Video Game Chronicle said is true, it's possible Nintendo has a lot more games to show off next year, so maybe they want to re-attend E3. So, I don't know. This might not be the end of E3 for Nintendo fans. Maybe Nintendo will come back when they have a, a, a much bigger slate of games. Also, this does make you worry about the second half of this year. Doesn't mean there won't be any content. I'm guessing a lot of GameCube remasters, which might make a lot of you guys very happy. I'm guessing new NSO content. I'm guessing tons of DLC and new Pokemon and Pikmin 4 and maybe some smaller Mario Sports title or Mario and Luigi. I, I There's going to be games. They just Nintendo doesn't apparently think they have the major games. They don't have the Marios and Zeldas and all that. So like, this is the one thing, Like if, if Tears of the Kingdom was a holiday game, maybe they think it could justify buying show floor space because obviously they would be able to at least talk a lot about Tears of the Kingdom, but it doesn't. It comes out before E3, so maybe that is it. Maybe that is the biggest game Nintendo has this year, and there's nothing coming close to it. So take that for what you will. So take everything for what it is. These are actual news reports out there. This is an actual trailer that leaked. This is not information that is from like a 4chan thing like yesterday or, you know, speculative uh, for the most part. I mean, I'm speculating on the hardware stuff, but I mean, come on. You, you know I was going to go there, right? Like, you, you had to expect it because clearly if all these reports from Video Game Chronicle and IGN are true about E3, there's only one reason that Nintendo wouldn't have enough major games in the second half of this year, right? One reason only. Because they're saving them. And why are they saving them? Come on. Let's... I, don't, I, th I think I'm making a pretty logical conclusion, right? Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel RoboJans from Nintendo Prime. Are you disappointed in this news, or are you uh, cautiously optimistic for the next generation system, knowing it'll probably have a killer launch year lineup? Or are you just whatever? You know what? You're like me. Tears of the Kingdom can entertain you for years. So 
it's cool. <laughs> or maybe you just, you really want GameCube remasters, right? Twilight Princess, Windmaker HD, Metro Prime HD, F-Zero, etc. Like, you just, maybe you just want GameCube remasters and you're good with that. I mean, they did end the 3DS era with mostly a bunch of remasters. So, I mean, I guess it's just Nintendo repeating what they've done before. Maybe. Time will tell.